Welcome to church. It's great to have you with us this morning on Valentine's Day. As we've launched Heartway, have you been able to get involved? Later on you'll see some photos of some of the things that people have done this week. Maybe you too have added a heart to your window or to a public space nearby. We're at the bottom of P-Zone Glen here and maybe if you're walking this way in the coming days you'll see some of the hearts that are here. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are here, that you love us, and that you call us to love other people. So Lord, fill us with your love afresh, so that we may receive more and know more of your calling on our lives to love others. Amen. So let's see what you've been up to this week. Here are your photos.
Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's going to feel real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures, where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy-embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now, we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards 
poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, we praise you for your great and wonderful love, a love that knows no measure, a love that has no beginning and no end. It is eternal, it is available. Your love is patient, it is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Your love never fails. Such is your love towards us and we love you because you first loved us. We praise you that you sent Jesus to be the total manifestation of your love. Your love is steadfast, it is certain, and your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. It is your love that binds us together in the name of Jesus, the one and the same Lord who, when asked, said, the greatest command is that we should love you, the Lord our God, with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength who also said that we should love our neighbours as we love ourselves. So we confess, we do not love you like this, nor do we love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Sometimes we even find it difficult to love ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. We ask this day for a fresh anointing of your spirit. Fill us anew with your presence, with your precious love, that we might love you today with more of our hearts, with more of our souls, with more of our minds and with more of our strength, that we might truly love our neighbours because we love ourselves. Increase within us the desire for your love in our worship today. Draw us now into a deeper sense of your presence. Draw us into a deeper sense of your love for us. Your word says, if we love one another, you live in us and your love is made complete in us. Help us today to put your word into practice. Come and live in us, we pray. Live through us and make your love complete in us. To this end, we offer you our worship today. We offer ourselves as empty vessels to be filled with another level of your love and all this In the name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and loving Saviour. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Gail and it's really great to be with you today. So what comes to mind when I say the word love? Is it your family, your friends, love hearts, your partner, the colour red, the sea, a nice cup of tea, chocolate, or is it Jesus? Agape is one of four differing kinds of love. It's an unconditional love, a sacrificial love. The kind that children give their cuddly toys. In the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13 lays out a list of things that defines agape. It means putting the other person before yourself, letting others have their way in the little things as well as the big. It means you put their comfort and well-being before yours. It means loving a person despite their flaws or shortcomings. It's about giving to others, sacrificing our time and energy, for someone else without expecting anything back in return. It's about responding calmly when faced with difficulties, without complaining and just waiting patiently. Agape is not just a feeling, but a choice. In his book, The Four Loves, C.S. Lewis used agape to describe what he believed was the highest level of love known to humanity. A selfless love, a love that was passionately committed to the well-being of other people. It's one of Jesus' greatest commandments. The New Testament references agape over 200 times. God is love and agape is the love that God has for us. The love that he asks us to show him and everyone else in the world. One of the most famous teachings in the Bible is during the Last Supper, when Jesus addresses his disciples. John 13 verses 34 to 35. And now I give you a new commandment love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. In this passage, Jesus is commanding his disciples to love everybody, just as he has done himself. To be a follower of Christ means to show unconditional love to all, loving them because like ourselves, they are children of God even if we don't really get on with them. And this is where agape is, is quite hard and it's not really that easy. And it does not come naturally to most of us. This type of love enables us to love the unlovable and serve people, whether we feel like they deserve it or not. It tells us to love everyone that we meet and those who we are yet to. Of course, this comes naturally to God as it's part of his character. But by drawing closer to him and experiencing his love, we are able to understand what real love means. Only through him can we show and experience agape. God set the standard for love. He sent his only son to die on the cross to save us all from our sins. This is agape right there in action. It's a love that can be shown. An example of this is during the coronavirus pandemic, all those healthcare workers, those in education, supermarket workers, community helpers, collecting prescriptions for people, and everyone else who is dedicating their lives to serving others, helping others, and putting other people before themselves. It's all about expecting nothing in return. And I'm reminded every day that we do not need to judge others, but love unconditionally, as we do not know what other people are going through. Choosing to love, choosing agape love is hard, We'd all be lying to ourselves if we didn't say that sometimes we tend to be a little bit selfish, whether that's with our time, money, even our feelings, to name a few. But just like Jesus did, we need to learn to put others before ourselves, just like he did on the cross. To love like God is one of the best choices that we could ever make. To always love this way brings us closer to him and to his love. So what a week with the snow everywhere. In our house, the snow has been a real blessing. It brought some real joy to a situation where we've all been a bit fed up the last week or two. So thank you to Gail for her message. 
What strikes me about Agape is this um, question of, well, what's the most important? Is it love your neighbor as you love yourself or is it God? And in the video we saw from the Bible project earlier in the service, I just loved the bit that said, what's the most important? Is it this or is it this? Jesus answers, yes. Because loving your neighbor as you love yourself is loving God. And the only response to loving God with all your heart is to love everybody. And so we've given you a lot of challenges. We've been sending you off making all sorts for Heartwave. And I hope you've had lots of fun doing that. But on this St. Valentine's Day, on this day that's all about love, I just encourage you to sit back, to relax, and to revel in the fact that you are unconditionally loved. I've listened to a couple of songs the last couple of days. One by Al Gordon, who's relatively young in comparison to the other author that we'll come to in a minute. His song says, because of your love, there's dancing in my heart. Because of your grace, I am free. Because of your faithfulness, there's a song that must be sung. And I will sing because of you, because of your love. And then hundreds of years ago, Isaac Watts wrote, when I survey the wondrous cross. And if you think through that song, if you think through everything it says, that is agape. Love so divine, it demands my soul, my life, my all. As we ponder what that means to ourselves, for our families, for the people we love, for the people we don't really love, but we should. Let's ponder what that song means as we join together in When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. See from
let us pray. Your love flows like a stream into the ocean of your grace. Your love encircles the world and displays your faithfulness. Your love is patient and kind, brings wholeness and true peace. Your love is all we desire to heal our brokenness. As all things pass and fade away, love remains eternally. We pray for those who are unwell due to the coronavirus and other illnesses. In your compassion, grant them strength and healing. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. We pray for all who minister to the sick throughout our health service, that they may renew their strength in you and be channels of restoration and renewal for those who suffer. In the day of trouble, you answer us, O oh Lord, and you protect us. You send us help and give us support. We pray for all who are anxious about loved ones, friends and neighbours. Enable them to trust in you and be steadfast in hope. You are near to the broken hearted, O oh Lord, and you save the crushed in spirit. We pray for all those who feel isolated or alone, that they may experience your loving presence. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. We pray that you would inspire those who are strong to care for the vulnerable throughout the world and to serve them in love. Lord, you raise the poor and lift the needy. We pray for your church, who longs to praise you throughout this strange and confusing time. Through your creative spirit, fire our imaginations to proclaim your unchanging love in new ways. How can we sing your song, O oh Lord, in these strange times? We pray for all in authority who face difficult decisions that affect the lives of many. Grant them the wisdom and the courage. We cast our burden upon you, O oh Lord, and you sustain us. Your love flows like a stream in the ocean of your grace. Your love encircles this world and displays your faithfulness. Your love is patient and kind and brings wholeness and true peace. Your love is all we desire to heal our brokenness. As all things pass and fade away, love remains eternally. Amen. Amen. So if you're wondering why I've got the hat on, I've been cold today, I've been on the beach with the dog and it's freezing. That's led to my hat ruining my already massive hair. So uh, don't judge me for the hat. It's just to hide what is diabolical underneath. I <laughs> um, just wanted to give you a quick update that Tom and Dave and I this week have met to talk about the online services for the next few weeks. Um, it's Lent and we're, um, we've got lots of new and exciting speakers that haven't spoken on our service before. We've got lots of friends coming in to talk to us. Um, we've got church anniversary coming up. And then of course we've got Easter coming up. Lots to think about, lots to be excited about. If there's anything you'd like to hear in our services, if there's any, any songs you want to hear, if there's any comments you've got, any suggestions, we'd love to hear them. And in the uh, last October-ish, when we last talked about this, we talked about it would be great to hear people's testimonies about what God's doing in your lives. We know that it's a difficult thing to volunteer for, so we'll definitely be sending out a few Facebook messages, a few emails, asking if you'd be prepared to share something with the service, with our community online. It goes so far beyond Scarborough. We get messages from um, Scotland and Western Supermare 
and Selby and all sorts of places. Um, we've got people in Scotland, Wales, England, not sure about Ireland, um, who definitely watch our service every week. So um, if any of you have got anything to say, any comments, we'd love to hear them. We just want um, this, which is all of our service, to be exactly what you want it to be and expect those messages because we'd love to hear um, a bit about what God's doing in your life at the moment. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this morning. It's been great to worship with you. Don't forget if you need anything at all, you can email us hello at queenstreet.org.uk or contact us via facebook.com forward slash Queen Street Church. If you need anything at all, please do get in touch. In the meantime, enjoy Tuesday and your pancakes and we'll see you here next Sunday. Now, let's close with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Spirit leads me on